Good evening. Welcome to Broadcast Asia 2015 here at the Sydney Equipment Booth. Now we are interview Mr. Jeffrey Chappell from Cook. Hi, today we have with us Jeffrey Chappell, the famous Jeffrey Chappell from Cook Optics. Jeffrey, how are you? Andrew, thank you very much indeed for inviting me. I'm really well and pleased to be here in Singapore. This must be, how many broadcast ages have you been to now? Uh, I've stopped counting many years ago. <laughs> Cook name has been around since 1893, so been training for 120 years and you know, throughout the world most people have, if they've been to film school were trained on Cook lenses and um, I think out of all the optical manufacturers out there today Cook is the only company that only specializes in digital cinematography lenses so um, whereas your other companies manufacture lots of different lenses for different applications but Cook is still pure 100% to the digital production market the Cook look is something that's really kept with us for a long, long time. I think what it is, it, it's um, the Cook look is a more organic look. It's, it's a more natural look. And I think, I, I explain it to a lot of people, it's like, um, it's very kind and friendly to the brain because if you look at me and I look at you, you can only focus on one part of the face at the time. You know, life is 3D, it's not, you know, it's not on the flat plane. So when I'm looking at you, I can only focus on one part of the face and the rest just drops off. I realise you've got ears, but I can't see the big spot on the back of your head. But, you know, this is what you will get with the cook. You get a much more natural drop off. So you'll focus on the image brilliantly sharp, either on the eyebrows or the eyes, and then the rest just drops off naturally. So when you look at a cook image, it feels much more natural to the brain to have that look. Some people call it a soft look. Of course, the lenses are not soft, but it's a more natural look. I think, you know, for our um, viewers you know, watching this at some future day, I think it's very important if you've never experienced the art of filmmaking, you know, we were spoiled with film. In film, we had different manufacturers making different emulsions. And all the manufacturers had a slightly different color tinge. And then each film manufacturer had a different speed of film. So you had a lot of control in the speed of the film and the look of the film. But that's only part, because then when you had it processed, you could then force the processing, you could do complete bypassing, you could create a different look in the laboratory. And then you come to printing, and then you could print it differently. So when you work with film, you had a lot of ways of manipulating the image to the look that the director and the DOP wanted. Mm. Now with digital, unfortunately, we've got one sensor, which is a very scientific, high specification sensor, and most cameras give you the same look. So the only way to control the look of the movie and to put your personal sort of look to that movie is by choice of lens, number one, and two, use a filter. Now, to use a filter, there are more filters being used today with ND stops in it to reduce the speed of the sensor so that you can use the lens of full aperture to get a very narrow depth of focus. So at the moment, Cook's range of lenses for anamorphic is 25, 32, 40, 50, the new 65 macro which will be announced in two days time, 75, 100, 135. We then will plan to do longer lenses, but also the most exciting news that come out of NAB this year is a new Cook Zoom. Um, just started design, we're in, we're in the second phase of that. We've just announced publicly this week that it's going to be 35 to 140, and it's going to be a similar size to that of our old 5 to 1 lens. The T-stop, normally when the lens is completed, because again, as I was saying to you, each lens is individually engraved with the focus spot. Once you measured it, each lens from Cook is measured at the T-stop when we measured and supplied the lens. We are on design of working at a T-stop between T1, T, sorry, T1. You want to be nice. So. <laughs> T31 and T33. So, you know, that's what we're working for. If you look at the cameras today, and we owe Jim and Red Team 
our biggest thanks because they have grown the market. They've made cinematography available to many hundreds of thousands of yes. people around the world. Yeah. It's a very affordable camera. Also, it's a new look, a new direction. It gave competition to Ari. It woke Ari up, um, who didn't realize there is another market and another way to, to work. Mm. Uh, I mean, it was a digital revolution that really, when you say it came overnight, it came very quickly. It did. Very, very quickly. Different parts of the world reacted, but you know, when I, when I talked to my friends in India, I mean, that was one of the last strongholds of film, but when it decided to go, it went within a year. There is no such thing as a bad lens. And I mean that not only from today's lenses or from yesteryears. Vintage lenses now are sought after throughout the world. They are. Because people want a look, a particular look, that they can't get with the new lenses. Mm. So they will pay bonus prices for a set of 40 year old cooks. Mm. Film Mr. Turner was up for Academy Award, was shot by Dick Pope, BSC, on lenses that were 40 years old. Mm, amazing. Woody Allen's film, Midnight in Paris, was shot with both five-eye lenses and old vintage Pancro lenses. Why do you use anamorphics over spherical? It's because the anamorphic gives you a totally different look. Mm. It gives you a shallower depth of focus, number one. It gives you a different bokeh, that's the out-of-focus mm. spot, and some people like that. It gives you very, very shallow focus so you can concentrate more on the subject. But I think what people like is that when you watch and look at an anamorphic, it covers up the peripheral vision so you actually see the actual vision of what you're looking rather than a, 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 a box. Mm. So instead of being a box, you actually see what you actually see. Mm. So Jeffrey, thanks so much for joining us today and um, we look forward to the next amazing products from Cook. Thank you very much for doing this. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.